Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Sunday morning. Here we are. Hello, just checking who's there. Hi, Joeing. Hi, Heather. Kiki. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Just checking to see. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so um, this is uh, the yoga talk number three. And these short talks that I'm giving are um, just an opportunity for both myself and for you um, to discuss you know, anything that pertains to our path of yoga or our life of yoga. And, and so on the first day, I talked about intentionality and so um, and how intentionality gives us uh, a direction um, and uh, how intentionality creating some some practices in the morning gives us an opportunity to sort of find a path that is more stable and clear for our mind. The the. One of the main teachings that we find in all forms of yoga is that the state of, of yoga is um, correlated to the, the state of our mind. And that our mind, um, ultimately, when left untrained and kind of left to its own devices, our mind goes crazy. I was listening to, um, do you remember the, the singer in the, uh, in the 90s uh, called Seal? Remember Seal? He sang like crazy. Remember that song Crazy? And in, in one of the lyrics of the song talks about um, the, the people um, in our head uh, are often having an argument. They're like, they're going crazy inside our head. And um, I, I always think of that. Like I think of like all these different conversations that we have inside our mind and how without some kind of technique or practice or training, um, we get sort of thrown around by that. So yoga is that, is that technique for, for us, for, for me and for most of you. Um, and so today I thought I would discuss um, mantra and um, how mantra, um, the chanting of, of these sacred um, verses or sacred words in yoga, when I first began doing yoga, it seemed very out there. Like it, even oming seemed like such a weird thing. And I wasn't really connected in a very um, intimate way to it. It seemed like this idea out here. And I would do it because that's what you did as a yogi. And so I just followed along. And probably at the time, I thought it was really great, and really cool, but I was, I had no real relationship to it. And so um, now, you know, some years later, many years later, um, mantra plays a, a very specific role for me. And I chant at the beginning of my classes, at the beginning of my classes, um, with specific purposes in mind. And over the years, I've chanted different chants, different mantras. And now um, I do uh, four mantra at the beginning of my class. Um, and I've been doing them at the beginning of some of the streaming classes, um, the level twos and, and, and some of the level ones. So you, some of you have been asking about them and I thought I would just discuss them slightly. So the, the first mantra that, that I do is OM and that's sort of self-explanatory. I don't think I, I need to explain that, but we, we chant OM, simplifies everything, harmonizes everything. It's like the most sort of, what do we say, the most primordial sound, AUM. Chant that three times, and I'll often do that chant, just, just that chant, if I'm doing like a 60 minute class or if it's level one and it's more um, beginner friendly, so it's just sort of a, a basic experience. But further to the Om, um, I chant the Ganesha, um, the Bija mantra for Ganesh, which is Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. And I chant this Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha three times. 
you know, like ohm, you go like three times, repeat it, and sort of it gets heavier each time, it gets like more more stable. Because again, like the, the main thing of these practices is to like stabilize our mind and let, let, let all the crazy people of the mind is a woo, and become more quiet, sattvic, a yogic state of mind, sattvic state of mind. So this chant, Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha, is the Bija mantra for Ganesh. And Ganesh is um, known as the remover of obstacles in, in the yogic uh, mythology. He's the uh, elephant-headed god, right, with the little the, the little body and the head and the trunk. And he's known as the remover of obstacles. But um, more than just remover of obstacles, he is also like the uh, known as the gatekeeper. He's like the gatekeeper. And for you know something that I've adopted into my own uh, personal practice of of yoga and 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 applied to the practice for my my life for my daily routine is a is, is having guardrails, having guardrails that help me to stay in line through the day to be in my best state uh, to 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 optimize my state of mind and body. So these guardrails and Ganesh. Is the is the gatekeeper, so I I kind of take a leap and make this connection with Ganesh being a guardrail. He acts as like a guardrail, and the the guardrails um, that I that I'm talking about are things such as I talked about on the other um, video, getting up, having these routines where there's like um, meditation, pranayama, um, oil pulling. Um, um, taking things that that are putting me in a good place like guardrails keeping me in a good in a good path and guardrails that are also um, keeping other things out like a guardrail will keep the things inside inside and keep the things outside outside so um, I talked about like the digital minimalism like like keeping guardrails so that you're you're not always on your phone you're, you you have like uh, some kind of rules that hold you back from doing the things the crazy people in our head are trying to do, like those kind of the strange um, intentions or, or all these things that kind of throw us around. So Ganesh, Om Gam Ganapata Ye Namaha. Om Gam Ganapata Ye Namaha. This mantra is, is a way for me in the beginning of practice to identify that I'm building good guardrails. I'm having good, there is like uh, a, a gatekeeper. I'm not just some crazy, I mean, maybe, but I'm not just some crazy just doing whatever. The practice has like a structure and that structure is helping me to build structure to my, my daily life and my life in general. So Ganesh is also the, 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 like the, the problem solver. When we say the remover of obstacles, what we're saying is that there are obstacles, and when we're when we're chanting this to get about Ganesh, like Om Gam Ganapataye Noha, we're chanting in the in this way. Um, it's like a, a a declaration that we will work with the difficulties. We will work with the obstacles. There are definitely obstacles in my mind, in my life, and the practice is a place where we we become very conscious about working on how to solve problems. The asana is a, can be a problem. Shoulders or back or whatever, I can't do this. How do you do this? So this approach with mantra is like, I will take this practice as a chance to work with obstacles and become more creative in my attempt to resolve issues, problems, puzzles solve or resolve obstacles and puzzles, you know? And so Ganesh is this gatekeeper, this guardrail, and this problem solver. And this is a, a way that we build the intent for our practice. We're building an intent for practice. So it's not just like, okay, sit down and then just do the asana. That's still good. That has lots of benefit. But this is slightly deeper. We're building the intent chanting with this intention, this intentionality that 
I will work with the obstacle and I'm going to, I'm going to be, be more committed with these guardrails. Okay. So that's the, the, the second mantra. First Om, second Om Gam Ganapata Ye Namaha. The third is the Bija Mantra for Sarasvati. Sarasvati is the goddess of wisdom. So I, I use this one um, to complement the Ganesh Mantra for me to, because the goddess of wisdom, uh, Sarasvati represents wisdom. So when we sit down for practice, one of the obvious goals is to be wise, to live a wise, a, a, a life driven by wisdom. That is like, it's like we seek wisdom. We don't seek like just information. We seek wisdom. Wisdom being like this, this living energy that directs us in the, in the right way, in good ways. Wisdom is like this, this light and energy that directs us in really harmonious, positive, um, um, beautiful ways. So when we chant uh, Sarasvati's mantra, Om Aing Sarasvati Ai Namaha. Om Aing Sarasvati Ai Namaha. When we chant this mantra, what we're saying is that through this effortful practice, be it meditation, be it asan, whatever we're doing, <clears throat> this practice that we're solving problems, facing challenges. We're really working with who we are, how we are, and, and, and growing and bettering. In that, the Sarasvati mantra is, we are also, from this experience, seeking to know ourselves at the deepest level of our own wisdom. And this wisdom is deeper than our thinking mind. Remember, the mind is like this, this component that is often just kind of crazy. It's like it can be crazy. It's wonderful and amazing, but it's also crazy. So the practice is resolving that we want to go deeper. There's a deeper state of who we are. Now I talked about this yesterday. How do we know what we want? Like, what do you want? How do you know what you want? Well, that's a, that's a hard question. That's a hard, that's a challenging prospect to know what you want. So we use these practices to discover who we are by going deeper, deeper inside, deeper than just the muscle, like the rah, 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 deeper than the thinking mind, the information, something deeper. And often we don't even know what that means. Even as I say that, I'm like, what does that mean? Well, we can't be told what that means. We just you have to experience it. So you go in deeper. Om Aing Sarasvati Ay Namaha. May I experience a deeper state of wisdom. It isn't going to come from Instagram or from, you know, the Wikipedia. It's not information. It's not like I need to read that book and then I'll figure it out. Uh -uh. It's like the state of our deepest wisdom exists now inside. And so we have to slowly penetrate into that place, go deeper into that place. So these are the, the two Bija mantras, Ganesh and Sarasvati. Ganesh, the remover of obstacles, the, the, the gatekeeper, the guardrail. Sarasvati, goddess of wisdom, the path of wisdom, to know ourselves at the deepest level. And the fourth one is the student-teacher invocation. The student-teacher invocation, which is, um, it's, it's such a beautiful mantra. I, you know, I've been taught it by a few people, but, but my first uh, philosophy teacher, taught me that, um, Gerd Farstein, Farstein, he taught that to me and, um, and it represents, uh, um, the, the partnership between student and teacher, this, this partnership that we, we, we need each other, like humans need each other to learn. You need partnership to learn. You need someone to, to, to look back at you to see a more full view of who we are because we're always looking out. So we can't often see ourselves completely, often or, or, or ever. So, so we chant as a way of declaring that we want this relationship, you know, to whatever degree we have it between ourselves and our teacher or ourselves and our students. Because I chant it to... 
to connect with my teachers, but also to my students, like to, to you guys or whoever I'm with, because it, uh, a, a teacher needs their students. I mean, the, 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 the one, the singular um, um, component of being a teacher is that you have a student. Like without that, then you're not a teacher. So the teacher uh, d- deeply needs students. And in that, um, the student is, you know, for, for, for me, students are the greatest teachers. It sounds a bit cliche to say that, but the, the truth of that is that students show us who we are by how they receive our, our teachings. So, you know, I learned from all the students, from all of you guys and from the people I've taught over the years, how I am. And, and, and you, it's not always easy. Like you learn how, you know, like, oh, you do your best. And you're like, oh, you know, it's like, ooh, that wasn't so good. Or, you know, like that, you know, I, I wasn't as effective or, you know, whatever shortcomings that we have, we have this ideal of presenting what we know and we want others to know. But then our students show us what they actually learned. So we could be thinking one thing and teaching something else. Um, so in that, we chant this mantra to connect with our students. And as a student, to connect to our teacher. And it's a, a, a humility prayer. It's a humility prayer that we can't do it alone, that we need each other. And that in this, we want to, in the mantra, we also say that we will give ourselves fully to our studies and our practice together. Like we will go in all the way and we will give ourselves, we'll make it energetic and passionate and we will partner in it. We will work together. And part of what I love about it is it says, we, uh, may there be no um, um, frustration or negativity between us because we know, as Ganesh points out, there's gonna be obstacles. And usually the obstacle is between people. So there's challenge in the relationship. And our, 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 our relationship together in the practice becomes stronger over time when we have difficulty, which is so cool. Like, like my greatest experiences with students and with my teachers have been in the difficult moments, not in the, oh, great moments, yay, hugging and woo, it's so great, Uh uh-uh, that's nice. But the ones, the experiences that have woven me together with my students, with with some of you guys, and with my teachers, have been the tough moments, the real confronting moments, even the the frustrating moments. And, um, And those, when we are able to go through those moments together with, with each other and not give up, whew, that's like the fabric of, of authentic connection, you know? When we realize we need each other and we want to help each other. We want to grow in this. So that mantra is a little longer. <clears throat> Om Sahana Vavatu. Om Sahana Vavatu. Sahanao Bunaktu. Sahanao bunaktu. Saha viryam. Saha viryam. Karava vahai. Karava vahai. Tejas vi. Tejas vi. Navadi. Navadi. Tamastu. Tamastu. Ma vitvi. Ma vitvi. Shavahai, Shavahai, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, now I'm just going to chant it all the way through. <clears throat> Om Sahana Vavatu, Sahana Bunaktu, Sahaviryam Karavavahai. Tejasvi Navadi Tamastu Mavitvi Shavahai Om Shanti 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 With all of you in my heart.
Namaste. Hey. 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 So that mantra <clears throat> is one that I, I finished the uh, initial chants before class or before practice. I finish them. Um, and then I, and then I do, um, and then you go into my, you go into asana, but this small little section of mantra, <clears throat> it helps tremendously for my mind. It helps my mind. It really, it anchors my mind. It's, it's like, I'm so amazed because I, I heard teachings like I'm giving right now years ago. And I kind of was like, eh, that's not for me. Or, eh. And, um, and so like, when I say these, these things to you now, I hear that old voice also. I still hear that. I'm like, yeah, it's interesting how the value of this stuff, it comes up over time, but it only comes through, the value only comes through, the wisdom of it only comes through after having done it for years. You know, it's, it's so interesting how yoga, there's so much passion and um, emotion and excitement around yoga. Um, and yet it's the things that we do a lot over a long period of time, of biasa, that, that, that start to reveal wisdom and, and value. And um, so great to brush our teeth, you know? It's like, wow, that really worked out. Like imagine if we were debating that, well, I don't know, I'm not really into it, you know? <clears throat> but so I'm not equating brushing teeth to chanting <laughs> Sanskrit mantra, but, <laughs> You know, it is through the experience. So I guess what I'm saying is I encourage you to try an experiment and, and see if it helps, you know, and um, these small kind of uh, mantra prayer like like um, practices are a, 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 a powerful complement to the asana, the physical work and um, the uh, <clears throat> meditation. And all of the ex the practices I, I gave um, the other day, like the coconut oil and the and the the apple cider vinegar, etc. My one of my teachers, uh, again Georg, I spoke of earlier. He also introduced this simple mantra, which is um, I had to look it up to remember what it's called the Vadra Guru mantra, Vadra Guru mantra, and it um, it's simple. It is Om A Hum. Om a hum. Om a hum. And what are you doing? And um, om a hum. What is it? What it means? It represents body, speech, and mind. Om a hum. Body, speech, and mind. And so that is um, that is a, a always a great reminder for me that you can't just work out your body and expect to be in your optimal state. You can't just work out and then hope that everything will be good because there is so much going on in our mind. If we don't train the mind, then the body can be fit, but the mind's still crazy. Similarly, speech has such a potent um, effect on our lives, what we say, how we speak about ourselves, about others and everything. So this, this, this mantra, Om Aham, body, speech, and mind. It represents the dedication or the intentionality of having an enlightened body, an enlightened speech, and an enlightened mind, an enlightened, this higher level of our being. So I look to practices that, that help to elevate my body, elevate my speech, <clears throat> and elevate my mind. So to finish this talk, now, because we, we've discussed mantra, we've discussed, um, yesterday we discussed uh, alignments and how do we discover how, what we want. And, and the previous talk, we talked about intentionality and having these small practices. Well, I wanted to add one, which is um, in order to transform our speech, we, we can begin to have new input into our mind through the art of reading, the practice of reading. Reading um, specific uh, uh, material that has an enlightened uh, wisdom. So 
writing, whether it's um, fiction or, or, or spiritual texts or, or what have you, can help to elevate our mind, to elevate our speech. It is the input of new information, you know, and being really uh, conscious about at some point in every day, picking something up and reading something that is deeply helpful, not just interesting or some new scientist saying something or some new thing, but, but something that is clearly aimed at elevating our mind, elevating our speech in a way that affects our daily life. So I did give a, a book recommendation um, um, already, but I'll do it again. This is Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport, and I highly recommend it, highly recommend it. And that it's a great one about guardrails, about, you know, good information into our lives and being ruthless with keeping the non-essential, you know, the, the, the non-helpful information out. Okay, there's Mount Kailash. And yet a cameo of Drew Van Oten over there, but he's squirrely, doesn't want to hang out. Um, I am going to begin practice now. Um, please write me in the comments and tell me if, if this is helpful. Um, this, whole, this whole session this morning was basically on mantra and how mantra can help to create guardrails for our mind and intentionality for our practice, building the intent for practice. So tell me if it was helpful. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys, and um, I will continue doing this. So we do practice now from 10.30 to 11.30 on Pure Yoga Official. So just Sundays and Fridays, I do this level one on Pure Yoga Official. So I'm going to switch to their account, and then you guys join me over there. Um, starting tomorrow morning, I'll do another talk at 10, and I'll do another class at 10.30 on my account. Okay? Okay. Namaste, everyone. Namaste.